Hi, I am Jerome from Fastlane. Today I would like to show you how to configure an HREP. In the first video, we checked how the HREP was able to locally switch you uh, instead of sending the traffic and it to the controller. In this video, I would like to show you how you can use the HREP in disconnected mode. So when the HREP boots up, it needs to connect to a controller. It gets its configuration from the controller. But the interesting aspect of the HREP is that if you lose connectivity to that controller, during lifetime of the HREP, it does not necessarily disconnect its users. You know, a normal access point in LWAP mode without a controller is nothing. It just cannot perform anything. Whereas the HREP turns into an hybrid slash autonomous mode and can not only maintain the connection of the already existing users, but also accept new users in 802.1x mode. So you know 802.1x requires a radio server. So this is something which is often confusing because the reduce configuration is done on the controller. So if you lose the controller, how does the HREP connect to the radio server? And how is it known to the radio server? So this is what I would like to show you here. One thing I need to mention is that I'm running here code 4.2, which is the mainstream code and the code used in the CCI wireless lab for now. Um, so I would like to show you how you can use the HREP to authenticate to an external radio server without the controller. In their code, uh, 5.2, 6.0, etc., there are a lot of improvements on the HREP, and you can even use the HREP itself as a mini radio server to authenticate users. But that's not what I want to show here. I just want to show you how you configure the HREP and the network to allow the HREP to authenticate to a radio server without the controller. So this is a setup. I have um, one HREP here. It's 1252A. It's in HREP mode, as you could see here. Um, it has VLAN mapping, it, it's a VLAN is VLAN 10, and it has a VLAN 12 to which it's sending one SSID. Okay. There are a couple of commands I like to use on the HREP. One of them is show LWAP RIP status. It tells you what is the state of the access point seen from the HREP standpoint. So you see it's in HREP mode, well, it still says RIP, which is the old term, um, and it's connected mode. Another one I like to use is show derived config. That tells you what the access point config is seen from the AP standpoint. So that's very useful in the case of an edge trip because you can see how um, what part of the controller configuration the edge trip took uh, for itself. So it has a couple of uh, uh, items here, but the, the main part I want to show you is by the end. So here, so beyond the certificates, it has all the interfaces and VLAN tagging um, that we define on the web interface. But you see there is no specific information about radius. That's what I want you to see here. There is nothing there about radius. Because um, for now, the HREP doesn't know what to do if it loses connectivity to the controller. So we need to tell the HREP what to do when losing connectivity to the controller. And what we want the HREP to do is to use a radius on its own without relying on the controller. So this is done, of course, from the controller because you cannot configure the HREP directly. You have to do everything from the controller. And it's here in wireless. And there is this HREP group here setting. So you go there and you create a new group. Call it the way you want, my group. Apply. And in this group, you are going to do two things. The first one is to decide of which access point you want to put here and decide of where you want to send these access points, you know, to which radio server. So this radio server has to be defined somewhere. So to save us time, I defined the uh, uh, one, H uh, one radio server here already. So I'm going to tell the HREP, whenever you lose connectivity to the controller, I want you to go on your own to that radio server. Apply. And the second thing, of course, is to add the access point to that group. So I'm going to pick it up from the controller, and it's the only one. I am adding this access point to the group. OK, fair enough. I have everything now. One key here is to keep in mind that the HREP, like any LWAP access point, gets its configuration from the controller when it joins it. So it is always safe when you change something like that to reboot the access point, reload. You can also wait for the next update, LWAP update, but it's you know safer to get the configuration from the uh, CapWAP is a bit different in that respect, but on the web, you always want to reboot the access point to be safe. I'm using time lap here so that you don't have to wait. So as soon as the access point is back, if you say show derived config, it has very little information. It's very basic, as you can see, almost nothing. 
the reason why is because it hasn't joined the controller yet. But if you wait a few more minutes and if you let the AP join the controller, it should get all this configuration from the controller and the uh, resulting um, derived config should be a lot more interesting. Here we go, the access point joins the controller. So if I say now show derived config and go to the end of the file, here you see we have all these certificate I, I use time lapse so that it doesn't take too long. But at the end of this configuration file, you see it has this very interesting information radio server host, and that's what we configured in the HP pool. And you see it gives the port and the key my secret. What is that key? Well, that's the key I used when I configured that radio server here on that page. I used the key my secret to configure the radios. So now my access point, my trip knows that if it fails getting to the controller, it can always query, query the radio server on its own using the key my secret. That's fair and well, but the radio server doesn't know that yet. So the next and last step is to go to the radius and add the access point as a possible client so that the access point has the right to query the radius directly. So this is straightforward. I'm using the ACS here. So if I go to network configuration, I have my controller here already set as a client. So the controller has the right to query the ACS. And I'm going to add another client. I'm going to call it a trip. And I'm going to use the IP address of my access point. So in case you didn't notice it, it's 10, 10, 10, uh, 140. I used this a static IP address for that access point. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 114. I'm going, of course, to use the same secret, my secret here. What is the format? Guess what? It's going to be airspace because the access point is an LWAP access point. So although it's an Aeronet access point, it's not really an autonomous mode. It's an hybrid mode, so it's aerospace. Okay, I submit and apply. So the key here for verification is to try to use a client and see if my client can authenticate using this SSID and check if we lose connection to the controller, if the client can still be connected. Okay, in between my laptop crash, but I'm back on another laptop. So I'm connecting to this my SSID too, and to be sure, I'm going to shut the port to the controller. This way, I'm going to make sure that the access point is not connected to the controller anymore, so that it's in hybrid mode. So I do a shut, and you see that immediately the access point starts saying, oh, I'm needing to discover the controller again, so it's losing connection to the controller. I'm going to now disconnect completely from the SSID. Here we go and then try to reconnect back to check if I'm connecting back with the access point being in autonomous mode or in hybrid mode that is not connecting anymore. And you see, it looks like I'm getting an IP address. And in a few seconds, here we go, I'm back connected. And if I go back to my access point, you see, you can see that the access point is connected. Um, the client, sorry, is connected, but you can also see that there is no connection to the controller anymore. It's in discovery mode. So it seems to be to, to have worked. So how can we check? Let's go on the ACS and look at the past authentication file. And voila, as you can see, we have an authentication right here using the default group. And um, if I go back on the right, I see that the um, NAS IP address, that is to say the um, client IP address is the, the access point uh, IP address. And in between my access point is still disconnected. Um, and if I browse to the right, I can see that the authentication is successful and the name of the client is 1252A. So it looks like it worked. My client could successfully be authenticated on the access point with the access point not connected to the controller anymore in sort of autonomous mode. And it could relay the authentication parameters to the ACS and I could successfully authenticate and get an IP address. Well, that's it for today. I hope it was useful for you. I would like to thank you for watching.